Sí. Yo, what up, what up? From Hypebeast Radio, I'm Manny, and this is Mike Line, a show that looks to discover the origin story of your favorite artist or major player in the music industry. We ask the questions that you have always wanted to get answered, and you never know who may pop by. Don't forget, we migrated into separate shows on Hypebeast Radio, so you have to individually subscribe to the shows you want to listen to. Search and subscribe to HBR Show, Business of Hype, and Mike Line, or wherever you get your podcasts on. Do it now so you don't miss any episodes. Okay, let's get into this week's episode. For this episode of Mike Line, we talked to Davido about crossing over, Afrobeat, Nigeria's music scene, and a ton more. Welcome to Mike Line. So on today's episode, uh, a big, big artist in town, international artist, someone I've been a fan of for, for a while now, and I guess I want to introduce yourself. Yes, what about people? It's your boy, David O, represented West Side Africa, Nigeria, precise. I'm Nigerian. Oh. I was born and raised, I was born and raised here, but Nigerian, but Nigerian music and also now evolution to Afrobeat has been a part of my, I guess my, in my house and my family. Yeah. All for all what my life. You? So my father is, is Yoruba. My mother is, um, Igbo. Okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of split. split. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I think what's the beautiful thing about, for me, this is something that I've been noticing for a while, but what's happening, I think, for over, I want to say for the last year or some change, yeah. it's just been an explosion of how the genre kind of taken over internationally. The culture. The culture. So I guess for people who may not know you, I yeah. guess describe your journey to now. First of all, I started as a producer. Mm-hmm. You know, as people may know, I went to school in Alabama, grew up in Atlanta for some years as well. And I started being Nigerian back then, being African back then, it's like 2000 on 10, 2009 when I was here, mm. it was it was not as cool as me. As <laughs> not, not, not even close. So my journey was, I really started doing like American type music like mm. when I was in college with my cousins and stuff like that. So one December, I went to Nigeria and I saw how like the culture was, the music. It's like 2010 and I fell in love with Nigerian music, fell in love with the entertainment. Then it was like P-Square, the badge. You know, I fell in love with the whole thing. I was like, I want to be a part of this. I don't really, I don't see myself really being in the American industry or nothing like that. I packed my bags and I moved back. And it's just crazy how me moving back to Nigeria, doing what I did in Nigeria, making the type of music I made, making the type of music I know how to make. And for it to be crossing over here now, you know, someone would think I would have to stay here, make music here, sound like them to get on like mainstream radio and stuff like that. So for me to be here, go back home, and for the cycle to come back over here, just feel like it's amazing. And there are a lot of factors to it, you know. African people are really supportive of their culture. They're really proud of their culture. You know what I'm saying? So from them asking the DJs to play it in the clubs, people like you want to hear it. You have friends, you play it, they'll like it. It spreads that way, you know. It really started from... The African clubs, then the Caribbeans, then before you do it, the, the diaspora and everybody else was messing with. It's not even the only the music, the food, the clothes, you know what I'm saying? So everything is just coming together. Wakanda, the movie. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so many things that when you describe, when you're talking like pop man, this one was just like, I remember vividly growing up yeah. and be, I, I being African was uncool. It was just like, oh, like what? People used to hide it. Yeah. Like you'd be like, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to wear yeah. um, traditional, traditional clothing or the music, they turn it down. But now I think just because of people understanding of not only just history of where they, of where, where they came from, but also just looking at and being open to the culture and the music, especially the music with the internet being so, so and social media as well. Social media, it's like, oh, this yeah. is this is exciting. Yeah. This is this is originality. Yeah. This is where everything begins. Um, and so I love that Afrobeat is becoming this huge like phenomenon, and it's something that looks like it should be sustained. But from your point of view, is this something that you predicted, or was it something? This is a surprise to for you. To be honest, um, I get this question a lot, especially lately. People are like, well, "How did you? Um, why is it now? Why is it fall? Why is it?" Yeah. To be honest, I just woke up and I was in the, like African people just like, yo, I heard this, heard this. Before you know it, they started playing it every day, every day before you know it, two times a day. It's just, I don't know what happened. It was just natural. Yeah. And to be honest, it's when I didn't try it, that's when it went. Yeah. When I was here for eight months in 2016, going around every state, working with different producers. I worked with Thug. I worked with so many people trying to sound like them. It didn't work. I was here for eight months. The moment I go back home and focus on home, it transcends here. So 
that just says it all. Yeah, because Fall you know came saying? Fall came out like a year with some yeah, change yeah, ago. Yeah. And then even if that's like a record that started yeah, to like, make his way over here, I guess. But in, in general, why do you think Afrobeat just like just because it's? I think it's like a really special age with like you, Mr. Easy, Wiz, um, what's Burner that other guy? Afro Afrobeat Burner Boy. Like Burner oh. Boy is now about to be a Coachella. Yeah, you everywhere every, on the charts. Also, American and artists coming over so, and working. Yo, let me say something. That that was a big factor too. Mm -hmm. The artists coming to Nigeria and me hosting them and showing them mm -hmm. what Africa is really like, like the lifestyle and everything. And they came back, them telling other artists. The first set of people to come were the Migos. Mm -hmm. Migos came in 2000, late 2017 or 16. That's just before I dropped If, and that's just when they dropped Bad and Bushy. Mm -hmm. You know, I showed them the city, and they, from there, um, artists just started coming. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Casanova came down there and shot a video. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I hosted him, took him to the beach, showed him the great part. He wanted to see the hood. I took him both places, but, you know, showed him, like, Baby, Lil Baby came out there. I hosted yeah. him, too, so I could see it in their eyes that they were just like, wow, I've been told lies all my life mm. about this place. You know what I'm saying? What are some of the lies that they said have been told? Because like, I feel like I do hear that. I mean, you you, you know the normal things they say, like, yo, y'all got houses. Like, you know, it's just the normal thing people would think of Africa. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But when they get there, they seeing Ferraris. They seeing private jets. They yeah. seeing, you know what I'm saying? And another thing is that, you know, one thing I love about African people, especially Nigerian people, no matter if they have money or they don't have money, they're always happy. They always mm -hmm. find a way to be happy. And entertainment has been a source of happiness for our people because... There's nothing much to look up to, do you understand? So our entertainment has played a very big, big factor in our livelihood. So I think the Africans here too, you know what I'm saying? If you think about it, the same way Africans act Africa is the same way when they come here. Mm -hmm. A normal African house. Once you enter the house, you're in Africa. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in Brooklyn, you know, you know how it is. With African parents, they're cooking the food for their kids. Yeah. So that's why you have people like you in this position, being Nigerian, people are other outlets being Nigerian. So I feel like everything just came together at once. And people are really listening. Now people are coming to Nigeria this December. I can't even tell you how many Americans came. Because yeah, it's starting because I see it more often because it's very known that in De December, late December in Lagos and around the area, it's... That the, is the time to be in Nigeria. That uh, is it's the time. A, December. It, it's, December. It's like, it's better than New York. It's yeah. better than... Trust Most me. major cities. The sun is out. People are on holiday. It's, yeah. it's, it's partying every day, celebrating Christmas parties every day. Exactly. Free food. Exactly. You know? And so it's starting to get, I've definitely seen, especially starting last, last year was the year I, I felt like a, a lot of people that I never thought would be go were like, right. oh yeah, I'm going. Yeah. And so I think it's just because of the, the climate or how people change or what, what it is to come to an African and to go to as like a major, this is a major city. Lagos is a major city as rival with any major cities. It's interesting. And I definitely see that the music scene is helping that image a lot. Yeah. What is the music scene out there now? Like, what is it, what's it like? You already know the music scene is crazy. You have the normal, you know, burn away me, easy, like you said, but there, there's a lot, a lot of hot people. I got a label myself. Mm -hmm. DMW, we got Mayo Kun Peruzzi, um, Ichaba, Yonda, Jermo, you know, so we have a lot of artists. And then there's this new kid called Zlatan. He's hot now. Mm -hmm. You know, doing the little dances. You know, this dance called Z Zanku. That's like the wave and the sound right now mm -hmm. in, in Nigeria. So the Nigeria industry is so so big yeah. that people over here getting excited about fall. They don't even know what they're missing. So when they come to Nigeria and they hear all these songs, take it back to America. I'm like, yo, listen to this, listen to this. Like, I just left a radio station and I just gave them other songs. And I pop it over there. How do you discover artists? Sometimes just by chance, or I just get introduced to them. One of my artists I've been on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Mayoku. Met him on Twitter. Blew, blew up. Seeing that as well. And I was, they're all coming here as well. All planning to go record an album in Jamaica and drop it and just go crazy. What's, the, what's the, like the climate in general in Nigeria? Because I know the election just passed. So some, what are some of the things that, as, oh. as, as a young, as a... I mean, as, as a, a young man, I know I, I have a voice and I, you know, I spoke up, spoke out about the elections and, you know, I've campaigned for my uncle in the past and, you know, when the election processes are not 100%, um, something I saw with my own eyes. So that's why I started speaking up. But, you know, I feel like even if I can't change it myself, I feel like at least when it does change, I can say I was one of the people that, was behind this change. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do believe that Africa needs, you know, younger leaders. Yeah, but it's happening all over the world, little by little. And I feel like in due time, you know what I'm saying, Nigeria will be next in line to have 
why do you think the UK music scene is so it's first to get on the wave of Nigerian music? I um, feel like that's just first of all, it's closer. Yeah. Number one. Second of all, I think there it's a lot. London is kind of smaller, so it's a lot of Africans and in great positions that made sure. The, the term Afrobeat came from the UK because when the African music was coming, they didn't know how to put it in a genre. So like, it's called Afrobeats. You know, Afrobeats are, are, is originally originated by Fela. May so rest in peace. You understand by Fela? It's the originator of Afrobeats. So that's the name that stuck with us. So we took it over. And Afrobeats is just crazy right, right now in the UK. Over 15 Af- African artists getting played in the clubs and radio. Even more, probably more. What do you do outside of music? I mean, just play with my kids. Most time making music. Um, we have a goal on the journey. Um, I love to be on the road. I don't like to be idle. I don't like to just sit at home. You know what I'm saying? I catch up on my series on the plane. And just work, innovate, break the barriers. Every year I like to challenge myself. I just did the O2 Arena. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now I've challenged myself to do the MSG. So that's what I'm working towards. Do you think eventually music, international artists and international music would just be like it just it will be seamless like regular yeah it would just seamlessly be like okay oh yeah yeah that's 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 where we're going that's definitely where we're going i see it happening if not next year the year after that or even before that i see it happening i see us having our own award categories mm-hmm. the grammy the best international best international music grammy i definitely think because I, I feel like yeah i don't think there isn't an international no. for the grammys or and i just think it should be also international categories like it should be something for k-pop yeah, like it BT, should be something for to, afrobeat the bt they gave me an award on the stage it's something uh, a lot of nigerian artists fought for and some nigerian artists even boycotted the bts mm. and lucky for me in the year i was nominated they gave me the award on the stage on, on live tv so things like that helped too as well you know what i'm saying when i spoke on the stage i told them i invited them i said yo Come to Africa, come to Nigeria, come see the culture, eat the food. J. Cole was there, Quavo was there. From there, I got on J. Cole's festival. Quavo put me on his album. So sometimes I feel like maybe we do have, maybe we do have to tell them. Give us the opportunity to tell them. Mm. BT gave me the opportunity to have all these important people sit and listen to one 26-year-old guy from Nigeria that has to speak. Have that little 10 minutes and it gave you that opportunity to talk to the whole of America. So now imagine if you have that opportunity at every award shows. Golden Globes, why is there no international category? Oscar, Oscar, stuff like that. But we're getting there. Well, I feel like when we get that opportunity to speak, they will listen. Mm. How come every time they go to Nigeria, they get addicted with the culture? Every Nigerian friend, everybody has a Nigerian friend. They, and that friend, they always get addicted to the culture. That's true. Everybody got a Nigerian friend. It's a very, African <laughs> culture is a, is a very addictive culture. Yeah. You want to be African by force. Like, ah, I want to be African. That's why we're going now. Before it was, oh, I don't want to be African. Now everybody people knows. understanding it. Yeah. Awesome. Honestly, this has been a really good communication. Thank mm-hmm. you God bless for coming you. out, man. Seriously. Of course, of course. Yes, yes. That's today's episode of Mike Line, and thanks for tuning in. You can listen to more episodes of Mike Line and keep up with everything Hypebeast Radio at hypebeast.com slash radio. Subscribe to Mike Line on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Overcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts on. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at ECM underscore LP and follow Hypebeast Music for more original content and music news. Let us know who you like to have on the show, and thank you for listening to Mike Line.